Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and my husband Chris and I have been eating a meat only carnivore diet for coming up on five years now, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, we live in Arizona and we kind of have this routine down where we pretty much grill every day and cook outside all the time for all the meat that we eat. But I realize that's not very realistic for a lot of people. Some of you might have snow currently uh, or just don't have grill setups and options. So I want to try in this video, I'm going to take you along one of our normal like what we're eating videos, show you a few days of meals, but I'm gonna do it all by cooking indoors. I dusted off the crock pot, I got some stove, oven, recipe ideas, and even today, today's a Monday, but it's a holiday, so I'm not working my normal corporate job, and so I'm gonna do a little meal prep, get us ahead for the week, uh, and then show you how we can cook indoors. Hopefully you can get some ideas from this video and things that you can implement in your life to make a carnivore diet more sustainable for you. Before I start cooking, I'm going to fix myself a drink of my electrolytes for the day. This is a pack of the Element Unflavored, which is 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, and 200 milligrams of potassium. And I have my large 44 ounce water that I'm gonna dump this into. Element is one of those things that I incorporate daily because I'm not eating carbs. So I need the additional electrolytes so I don't get muscle cramps, uh, so I sleep better, I have better energy. Especially now as I'm going to be kind of fasting and doing meal prep throughout the day, this is going to make sure that I have all of those electrolytes that I need uh, until I eat. I was at Costco the other day and as soon as I walked in they had like some displays of another popular electrolyte brand and I just glanced at the ingredients and the first two ingredients were cane sugar and dextrose and every packet had 11 grams of sugar in it which for me would completely wreck my mood my energy levels i would start to retain water i would swell up from the sugar and the carbs and i really am looking for something that doesn't have that so i stick to the unflavored version everybody else in my family loves the flavored ones which have stevia uh, and so they're going to be low carb P the people who made this understand that we don't want carbs and junk and sugar in our electrolytes. So I'm a big fan of it. If you're looking for an electrolyte supplement, uh, I highly recommend Element. If you want to try all eight of their flavors, you can get this sample pack for free with any purchase. And they have a 100% money back guarantee. So there's no worry about not getting a flavor that you like. And you can try their mango chili or their citrus, the chocolate, decide which one you like best. You can use this link, go to drinkelement.com slash Laura Spath to get a free sample pack with any purchase. And I'm very grateful to Element for sponsoring this video. Penelope is gonna help me do a little meal prep. Um, this is the keto crack ranch chicken thing. Um, so it's gonna be chicken breasts in the crock pot and we're gonna do some ranch seasoning um, and a little chicken broth. And then once it's done, we will add cream cheese, regular cheese, uh, shredded cheese, and bacon. Bacon makes everything better, right? <laughs> yeah. And so this is one of those things that will be really good for reheated. If you had to pack a lunch, uh, if we need a quick weeknight meal for the kids or whatever, um, or for myself, Chris doesn't typically eat lunch, so our dinners are really simple, really easy, and this is something that I wouldn't mind to eat microwaved again. A lot of meats are not the same when they're microwaved, but chicken with a bunch of cheese on it and bacon, it's pretty good. So let's do that. Um, I haven't used my crock pot in forever, but I store my crock pot liners in my crock pot so I can find them really easily. The only thing I was thinking is, is that is the carnivore like all the perfect people going to get mad that I'm cooking in plastic? Like it's low heat. Is this can I, am I allowed to use a crock pot liner? We're gonna use it. Okay. Cause then we don't have to wash it as much. Yeah. Daddy hates washing. Yeah. This is almost six pounds of chicken breast. We're gonna do half of it in the crock pot for this meal. And then I'm going to go ahead and bag up and freeze the other ones and save them for the future. So put uh, three big chicken breasts in there for me. I'm going to use the ranch seasoning from Flavor God. It's just a lot cleaner than using like one of the packets that you get at the store, but you can use whatever you want. So we're going to pour some of this in. That's a lot. I know, we don't really put it in. And then I'm going to add uh, some chicken broth and we will put it on high for four hours or you could do it on low for eight hours. 
tell them to stop. Mm -hmm. That's good. Perfect. Now we're gonna put the lid on. Okay, while the chicken is cooking, I'm gonna do a couple other things to meal prep and then I'm actually gonna start dinner for today. But to prep, I'm gonna do two packs of bacon in my new big Dutch oven. I have been wanting one of these like enameled cast iron Dutch ovens for a while. I just thought they were super expensive, especially for this size, but I ordered this one yesterday from Amazon. It was 50 bucks. Um, and it's really, it's like 14 pounds, I think is what the package said. It's huge and I'm really, I think I'm gonna use this a lot for indoor cooking just because I'll be able to put a lid on it and do a good sear and all those good things. Um, if I was doing bacon indoors, I can fit a half a pack of bacon in my air fryer. I can fit almost a whole pack on a cookie sheet in the oven, but since I wanna do two packs and I'm gonna use them for like breakfast leftovers and then also to put in my, our chicken later, I really don't care if they're nice long strips. So I'm gonna do the Nisha and Dr. Barry method of chop it all up and put it in a pot and make, they call them bacon chips, but I'm just gonna like put two pounds of bacon in here and cook it all at the same time. Then I'm actually gonna keep some of the grease in here and do some more cooking with it while I already have like all this good fresh bacon in there. I ended up cooking it with the lid off. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but it didn't splatter on the outside of the edges of the pan. And it ended up being really crispy, but with the lid on, it was kind of adding water and steam. So uh, I'm gonna pull out all this bacon, but that was two pounds of bacon inside, super, super easy. So I will definitely be using this method again. Can you help? And we'll bring me your packet and your lid. Okay, here. Okay, put it on and then I'll shake it up. Okay, I only used half and I'm gonna save the other half for later, okay? Okay. And I'll be, doesn't this look good? Yeah. Shake it up, buddy. Okay. That's crazy that that's two pounds of bacon. It only came down to this little pile. I am gonna save this. Oh, it's hot. Okay, those handles get hot. Uh, I'm gonna save the bacon grease for later, but there's all that good crispiness in the bottom of the pan. And while that's in there, I'm going to cook up three and a half pounds of ground chuck. And we will use this throughout the week for several different recipes. I am gonna cook it all right now with just a little bit of Redmond season salt to give it kind of a simple flavor. We will use them for cheeseburger bowls, which is just adding cheese on it and microwaving it, reheating it. We will do some taco bowls. I'll add taco seasoning when I reheat it and the kids can kind of put together whatever they want. But, uh, and then also I'll do like marinara sauce and some Parmesan cheese on top, which will give them lots of options. So I'm gonna cook this now. And that is something that we have probably three or four nights a week. The kids have ground beef of some kind with some kind of different sauce or seasoning in it. I'm gonna divide this into three glass containers and this will be three quick and easy dinners for the kids and I. And they won't, I'll eat probably taco meat 
over and over again because I don't mind that, but for them, it'll be three totally different meals. The ground beef is in the fridge ready for dinners for the week. And then I, once the chicken is done, that kind of takes care of dinner for the whole rest of the week. The only thing I don't have done yet is dinner for today, which is where the pork loin comes in. Uh, I get these at Costco. And then I prepped two, I bought three. I prepped two of them already. I typically cut off the fattier side uh, to save for pork nuggets in the air fryer or pork chops because I love that ribeye section. And then I take the other, the rest of it and I cut it in half and then I freeze it into bigger chunks. So this would get me two meals for the family and then like a smaller quick weeknight meal or a side dish. Tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make one of these roasted in the oven rather than, um, I've done it in the air fryer for you guys as Parmesan pork chops and on the grill quite a bit, but we're just gonna leave one section whole. It has a really good piece of fat on it and I'm going to put it in the oven and show you how delicious and juicy a pork loin can be. And to give it kind of a smoky flavor, I am using the Redmond Rock uh, barbecue seasoning, and that'll just kind of make it almost taste like it was barbecued. And then they, they also make a smoked salt, and I'll sprinkle some of that on at the end while I'm eating it, which makes it delicious. I have the bacon grease that I used, um, have left over from earlier. So I'm gonna smother this in bacon grease so that all the seasoning will stick to it. I'm cooking this on a cookie sheet with a cooling rack on top and that's just gonna help air to circulate. It's gonna cook more evenly that way um, and it's gonna create a better sear on the outside. I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees. We're gonna start it there and then I'll turn it down after it creates a little bit of a crust. And then I'm using my meter, Bluetooth meat thermometer. I'm telling you the number one problem that people have with pork and why it's dry is because they overcook it. And the thermometer and making sure that I'm using their recommendations and I don't overcook it is gonna help this to stay really juicy. The FDA has actually lowered the recommended temperature that you have to finish pork at. And I think some people are just, I think most people are still just like drastically overcooking pork. So you're gonna see how juicy this turns out. I am cooking the pork with the fat side up so it kind of bastes itself and stays nice and juicy. And then it's been on 400 for 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn it down to 350 and it's gonna stay at 350 for the rest of the time. When it hits that internal temperature of 135 degrees, I'm gonna pull it out because carryover temperature means the internal temperature is gonna to continue to rise while it is resting. So it'll finish between that 140 to 145 range giving me a perfect medium to medium rare, hopefully, pork loin. If you wanted to, when it's almost finished, you could brush it with a little sugar-free barbecue sauce, put it back in so then that starts to caramelize. Not everybody in our family likes it, and Nathaniel mostly just likes to dip it in it, so I won't, I'll just pour this on the side for him, but if your whole family likes it, then you could do that. Our kids do eat other things, but for every meal, we tend to just eat like a bunch of meat and everybody gets to pick. Usually, I mean, if we're grilling, everybody picks the meat they wanna grill. And then the kids know what sides they can have and they'll grab something from the pantry or the fridge, things that I usually pre-make and have on hand and they can just kind of like grab one or two things to go as a side to their meal. And then that way, I don't feel like I'm cooking a whole bunch of meals um, and the kids get to have different stuff with their dinner than just meat.
And there we have our super simple dinner. I have the Redmond's smoked salt. A little goes a long way on that. It's really strong. So I just put a little bit on. And then I have some, what's this cheese called again? Queso no. fresco? Yeah, it's like that, that queso fresco cheese that I got from Aldi the other day that I'm gonna put on top. If you had some goat cheese, that would be really good on pork too. Um, so yeah, Nathaniel, what are you having? I'm having some pork, pepperonis, macadamia nuts, and green beans. And I'm having green beans and a little snack medley cheese and pepperoni sausage thing. So tender. I could like pull it apart with my fingers. It's so good. Stop overcooking your pork. Good. It's not. I didn't forget about my chicken. Uh, it has been four hours. I'm gonna pull out the chicken and shred it and then put it back in with my brick of cream cheese, half of that bacon that we made earlier, and some shredded cheese. This is so creamy, perfect, and the bacon makes it. If I had to like pack a lunch for work every day or just wanted something to microwave, this would be perfect. This video has gotten a lot longer than I expected it to be, so I think I'm actually gonna end it here. I had some short ribs and some pork belly and some chicken and a few other things that I was gonna cook throughout the week, so if you wanna see more indoor cooking and what we eat, just let me know in the comments below and I will put it together and make sure you subscribe for more delicious ideas. Hope this was helpful. Thanks everybody.